If you've been paying attention to bike releases of late, then you may well think the aero bike is dead. Many of the biggest brands have released do-it-all models, which are said to be equal parts aero bullet and lightweight climbing machine. However, being the aero evangelist that I am, I don't think the aero bike is dead yet. And if you want to know why, you only have to look at a bike like this, the Cannondale System 6. Before we go any further, a big thank you to our sponsors Freewheel, and there are links in the video description if you want to find out more about the lovely cycling kit that I'm wearing. For a long time, the lightweight round tube Super 6 defined Cannondale's road bikes, and it was a mighty popular bike too, both among pros and amateurs alike. That changed in 2018, however, when Cannondale launched a System 6, a bike it claimed was the fastest road bike in the world. Now, that is a bold claim in anyone's books, but it was backed up by a detailed white paper and data from tests against its competitors at the time. The industry hasn't stood still though, with competitors releasing impressive new models and in some cases, looking at you specialized, killing off their aero bikes altogether. So in 2021, how does the System 6 stack up against the latest generation of go fast race bikes? Well, it's still incredibly fast and I'd argue that many bikes are still playing catch up. Intrigued or enraged by my opinion? Then watch on. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the little bell icon so that every time we upload a video, you get a notification. The model I have before me is Cannondale's Halo Spec System 6 High Mod Red ETAP Access, which, depending on who you asked, has some of the fanciest and best performing parts and accessories you can put on a bike. This does mean it's on the expensive side, costing 10,000 of your finest British pounds at current prices. Now, I know everyone will say you can buy a car for that. And yes, yes, you can. Bike Radar's beautiful video manager, Felix Smith's first car cost him just 700 pounds, for example. A delightful Volkswagen Polo, if you must ask. So for 10,000 pounds, young Felix could have had 14.2 700 pound Volkswagen Polo sitting on the drive or one top spec System 6. What would you have? But I digress. Let's get back to the build. This Superbike model gets SRAM's flagship red ETAP Axis wireless group set and Cannondale's not 64SL carbon wheels. Its high mod frame set uses Cannondale's stiffest, lightest carbon fiber. And while Cannondale's not handlebar mimics the look and performance of an integrated setup, it has a two-piece design that doesn't significantly limit adjustability. Handlebars are available from 38 to 44 centimeters, although being a true proponent of narrow bars, I'm not sure why anyone would want to run a 44 centimeter handlebar on an aero bike, and I'd actually prefer a 36 centimeter option at the narrow end. When it comes to stems, the not integrated stem is available in 10 millimeter increments from 80 to 120 millimeters and also allows the angle of the bar to be adjusted by up to eight degrees. No modern day aero bike would be complete without hidden cables. And the solution on the System 6 is, in my opinion, quite elegant. Rather than using anything proprietary or complicated, it simply roots everything through an opening in the head tube allowing the use of a standard one and one eighth inch steerer and headset. And there's even a headset cover designed specifically for use with a standard stem and handlebar if you don't like the stock knot option. The trade-off to this system is that the steering range is limited to plus or minus 50 degrees to prevent the cables getting squashed. But outside of very tight turns at slow speeds, this just hasn't been an issue for day-to-day -day riding. Now, let's talk about the handling and geometry. Given the frame set's chunky looks, my initial thought was that it would probably be fast in a straight line, but a bit slow in the corners. Thankfully, in my experience, that's not been the case. It is rapid in a straight line, but it also feels nimble and exciting when you're throwing it into tight corners or attacking your friends on a group ride. The 58 centimeter test bike has a stack and reach of 580 millimeters and 398 millimeters respectively, making it slightly longer and lower than Cannondale's all around slash lightweight climbing bike, the Super 6. And it also gets a 17 degree stem to keep things aero and aggressive at the front end. Combined with 73.5 and 73 degree seat and head tube angles, 
405mm chain stays and a 1000mm wheelbase, it's impressive how sharp the System 6 feels. At 183 centimeters tall, I'd probably get a 56 centimeter frame if I was personally buying this bike and put on a slightly longer stem and a narrower bar, but all things considered, this 58 was fine for testing. The System 6 is surprisingly comfortable too. While the front end is all about aerodynamic efficiency, the chain stays and the seat stays have both been optimized for compliance. In comparison, the Canyon Aero CFR, which I've also reviewed, and there'll be a link in the video description for that one as well, is also a supremely aerodynamic bike, and there's no denying it beats the System 6 on the scales by a hefty margin. The Canyon is also almost a thousand pounds cheaper and includes a power meter as stock. This means it largely beats the Cannondale for value as well, but there's still something nice about being able to walk into an actual physical bike shop and see the bike you're buying before dropping 10 grand on it. And with the Canyon, it's online only. I also found that a relatively narrow front wheel and tire combination on the Canyon Aero meant it often felt a bit chattery over rough roads. And though the adjustable integrated handlebar is an interesting idea on paper, I'm not sure it's any better in practice than a two-piece handlebar setup like on the System 6. And it definitely doesn't give you as wide a range of potential adjustability. So with some of the spec out of the way, what is it actually like to ride? First up, let's talk about the Cannondale knot wheels, which so far have worked remarkably well. The System 6's 25mm tyres actually measure around 27mm on the knot rims, which have a 21mm internal width. If you want to go larger, the System 6 also has clearance for tyres up to 30mm in size, though that will obviously come with a small aerodynamic penalty. With 64mm deep rims, you do expect these wheels to be fast, and they don't disappoint. With their 32mm external width and curved rim shape, they also contribute to exceptionally calm handling, even on gusty days. Weighing around 63 kilos, I did feel the push of the wind when passing gaps in hedgerows and the like, but it was never enough to knock me off course or reach for the brakes. And with the wind behind you, they absolutely sail. If I was really nitpicking, the Vittoria Rubino Pro Speed clincher tyres wouldn't be my first choice. They are fast and Cannondale insists that they strike the best balance of rolling resistance and aerodynamics, but some of that speed comes via the emission of a puncture protection belt underneath the tread. That's fine for short races and time trials, but probably less appropriate for longer races or general day-to-day -day riding. The knot wheels are tubeless ready though, so I'd probably recommend looking for a fast tubeless option such as the Continental GP5000. SRAM's red ETAP access group set makes a solid contribution, even if front shifts are slightly more hesitant than those on Shimano's Di2. The lever hood ergonomics also felt excellent in my hands, and the programmable shifter buttons are incredibly intuitive. It's worth mentioning, red ETAP access starts with a 10 tooth sprocket on the cassette and has relatively small chain rings up front as standard. Now, some people, myself included, don't think this is ideal from a drivetrain efficiency point of view, but that said, how clean you keep your bike will arguably play a much larger role in component wear rates, so if you aren't absolutely meticulous with your bike maintenance, I wouldn't worry about it. Payback also comes in the form of a tightly spaced cassette, which helps moderate your efforts and cadence more precisely. Next up, we have the brakes, which, as you'd expect, come from SRAM. They're red hydraulic disc brake models with 160mm front and rear. They offered plenty of power and modulation throughout testing, and I had no issues when it comes to stopping efficiency. The brake pads do sit very close to the rotor, however, so it was possible to elicit a little bit of rub when climbing out the saddle. Does this tiny bit of rubbing cost you anything in terms of watts? I don't really think so, but annoying noises like this are typically one of the irritations with disc brakes on road bikes. Finally, let's talk about the weight of the System 6. But before I go any further, let me make a statement which may break the internet and enrage all of you commenters at the same time. Are you sitting down? Here we go. When it comes to going fast, even up climbs, the weight of your bike isn't really that important. Internet, come at me. Why would you say such a thing, I hear you ask? Well, You'll have to read my five things I learned from testing the latest aero bikes article on bikeradar.com. The link is in the video description below. 
In there, you'll find all kinds of opinions which will either delight or enrage you in equal measure, depending on your perspective. Anyway, back to the System 6. Out of the box, this size 58 weighs 7.9 kilos without pedals or bottle cages. And I know that isn't going to impress many people, but as I've already said, in my opinion, this doesn't really make any difference to how fast the bike is. The aero gains are worth it. A final note on those aero gains. Obviously, to properly test aero bikes, you do need a wind tunnel or a velodrome and some fancy scientific equipment, neither of which we routinely have access to. But I can give you my subjective opinion from testing lots of aero bikes, and that is that this bike feels very fast practically all of the time. And don't forget, if you want to know more about my opinions on testing aero bikes, click the link in the video description. Well done if you've made it this far. Here's my bottom line on the Cannondale System 6. There are a few bikes that I've ridden that come close to matching the sensation of speed you get with the System 6. And the fact that it combines that with excellent handling and a comfortable ride is fantastic. Yes, it is expensive, but all top spec bikes are. You can also buy this bike from a physical shop and the frame set does come with a limited lifetime warranty. So when you compare it to similarly spec competition, it's actually quite competitive. Of course, if you don't want to spend £10,000 on a bike, then you don't have to, or you just simply don't have to get the top spec model either. But enough of my opinions. What do you all think? Is bike weight irrelevant, or is 7.9 kilos too heavy for a race bike? As always, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.